In this video, we'll discuss an entirely different approach to polynomial interpolation. This approach is associated with the name of Joseph Lagrange, a top five mathematician of all time. And of course, this approach will lead to the exact same polynomial as before, because after all, the interpolating polynomial is unique. However, this approach won't be based on any linear systems, so it won't involve any matrices, any Gaussian elimination, or anything else of that kind. Instead, it will be based on one beautiful idea. And you might think to yourselves, well, if it doesn't involve any linear systems, then it's probably not related to linear algebra. It will be approached based on something other than linear algebra. Well, it's actually somewhat opposite. The ideas used in this approach are even more central to the core concepts of linear algebra than our original approach that involved matrices. So here is the idea. The idea is to come up with a polynomial. Let's not only focus on the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and not the values along the y-axis 1, excuse me, 0, 1, 1, and 1. So let's for now just focus on the inputs. And imagine we could come up with a polynomial with four different polynomials, the first of which would be 1 at this point and 0 at the other 3. So 1 at the first point, 0 at the other 3. And then another polynomial that would be 1 at the second point and 0 at the other 3. And then a third polynomial, which you guessed it, would be 1 at the third point and 0 at the other 3. And then finally a fourth polynomial. I don't even need to say it, but I will anyway. That's 1 here and 0 at the other 3. So if we're able to come up with such polynomials, then we can go through any values that we want by just finding the appropriate linear combination of those polynomials. Suppose that we pick a yellow piece of chalk. We want to go through the values 4, 3, 4, and 2. Well, then I'll just take 4 of the, polynomial, of the first polynomial that I mentioned, 3 of the next one, 4 of the following one, and 2 of the last one. And because of how those polynomials were chosen, being 1 at one of these points and 0 at all the rest of the points, it will hit exactly these points. Because when we take 4 of the first polynomial that I mentioned, that was 1 here and 0 everyone, everywhere else, well then 4 of that polynomial will be 4 here and 0 everywhere else. Combined with 3 of the next polynomial, which would be 3 here and 0 everywhere else, we would get a new polynomial that's 4 here, 3 here, and 0 everywhere else. Those zeros assure that the value that you would get under, out of the polynomial that sort of belongs to that point is not messed up. So that's the general idea. And it turns out that these polynomials are very easy to discover. For example, let me show you a polynomial that's 1 here and 0 at all the other points. Well, to take care of being 0 at all the other points, all I have to do is multiply x minus 2 by x minus 3 by x minus 4. So here you go. You have, here you have a cubic polynomial that's guaranteed to be 0 at 2, 3, and 4. You can see why that is. But what is its value at x equals 1? Well, you just have to plug in 1 here and evaluate it and then divide by that value and that will guarantee that the value at 1 is 1, just like we want. Or we don't even have to evaluate what that number is. We can simply divide it by 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3 times 1 minus 4. Now let's consider this polynomial. So this polynomial is clearly 0 at all the po at points 2, 3, and 4, but at the point 1, what we have is 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3 times 1 minus 4 divided by the exact same values. So isn't that a nice trick? So we can call this P1 of x. So P1 of x has the desired property that at x equals 1, it equals 1, and at all the other points that are of interest to this problem, it equals 0. And of course, we can construct p of 2 similarly. 
And now we have to make sure that it's 0 at 1, 3, and 4. So we're going to multiply x minus 1 by x minus 3 by x minus 4. So that guarantees being 0 at 1, 3, and 4. And we just have to make sure that at x equals 2, it equals 1. So why don't we divide it by 2 minus 1, 2 minus 3, and 2 minus 4. And there you go. This is our second desired polynomial. It's 1 right here and 0 at all of the remaining points. And you can see that we could similarly construct p of 3, I won't write out what it is, and p of 4. And now that we have these four polynomials, in order to find the polynomial that goes through all of these four points, we just need to take these four in the following proportions. 0 of this one, 1 of this one, 1 of this one, and 1 of this one. And if we were going after, this, after these yellow points, we would take 4 of this one, 3 of this one, 4 of this one, and 1 of, th and th 2. All right, 4 of this one, 3 of this one, 4 of this one, and 2 of the last one. And that will guarantee that we go through all of these points. So there is these sorts of polynomials, other than being called Lagrange polynomials, could also be called atomic, these four. Atomic meaning that they're not zero at just a single point. Of course, they're not zero at very many points, but we're only looking at these four. So each one of these polynomials is not zero at one of these, at zero at the remaining three. So they're also called atomic. So what we're going to do now is go to the computer and make sure that what we just mentioned, none of this, one of this, one of this, and one of this, results in the exact same interpolating polynomial as we did before. So we'll be convinced that, it, that this method works and leads to the same result. And then we'll come back and draw some very important conclusions. All right, so here's the polynomial we obtained previously. So let us now implement the Lagrange approach and see if we get the same polynomial. So our first task is to construct the Lagrange polynomials. So here we go. All that's left is to combine these polynomials in the proper proportions. So of course, as we discussed before, we need to take zero of the first one and one of the second one and one of the third one and finally one of the fourth one. And the result is is exactly the polynomial that we had before. If we just put this minus 3 in the first position. So minus 3 plus 13 thirds minus 3 halves plus 1 sixth. So this Lagrange approach works. So let's now do the most important part, which is to interpret what just happened from the linear algebra point of view. And in order to do so, we have to go back to the concept of a basis. And we can describe the two approaches to polynomial interpolation that we now know from the point of view of two bases. When our initial focus was on the coefficients a, b, c, and d, which led to a linear system, which we then solved, we can think of it as working with the basis 1, x, x squared, and x cubed. And the alternative approach, so let's call this the standard basis. And then the alternative approach, we were dealing with the Lagrange basis that consisted of the polynomials P1, P2, P3, and P4, which you see partially on the right side of the board. And we have always professed that all bases are created equal unless you're solving a specific problem. And when you are solving a specific problem, then one or several bases can be chosen as being better or much better than other bases. So when it comes to the problem of interpolation, and let's say more specifically 
to the problem of interpolating data where the inputs are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, then this basis is just much better than this basis. And I'll bet you some time ago, you could not have possibly thought of any basis that's better than this one when it comes to problem of decomposition. And after all, everything we're doing in here, even though we're calling it interpolation, we're really reducing to decomposition. So back to the point I was making, until now you probably thought that nothing could be better than this basis when it comes to decomposition. Well, there are never any absolutes like that. There is never a basis that's best for all problems. This was a basis that would best for a problem if I give you a polynomial. Uh, what is its decomposition with respect to some basis? Well, this would be the easiest basis to decompose with respect to, because if you know the coefficients of the polynomial, then you know the components with respect to this basis. But now we were solving a totally different problem for which this Lagrange basis turned out to be much better. It is so much better indeed that all we need to do in order to interpolate any data for these four points, we just have to take the linear combination of these four polynomials where the coefficients are, mere, are simply the data points. So that's the main takeaway here. And even though there were no linear systems here, as you can see, this is even more central to linear algebra than solving a linear system. And that's the question of choosing a basis. Choosing a basis is one of the most important decisions that you ever make when you approach a particular problem. And for the problem of interpolation for these four points, the Lagrange basis is the best possible basis. So there you go. This alternative approach to polynomial interpolation allowed us to experience one of the most important concepts in linear algebra, and that's the choice of basis.